Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the annual general meeting of Cromwell Corporation Limited and the general meeting of Cromwell Diversified Property Trust. I'm Jeffrey Levy. I'm the chairman of the Cromwell Property Group. Before I open the meeting, I'd like to introduce you to my fellow directors uh, who represent the boards of the group. Uh, joining me on the stage, uh, are down, starting down there, is Michelle McKellar. Um, next to Michelle is Daryl Wilson, who is also our finance director, and, and then Paul Waitman, who is also our CEO. On my right here, we have Robert Puller, together with Richard Chapman, and, um, sorry, Foster, I'm going mad, and uh, um, David Youssef. Sorry, Richard. <laughs> Um, Mr. Michael Waters, as well as, uh, there goes the light, but it'll be more of a problem for you, Paul. Um, Mr. Michael Waters, who's in London, and also Mark Wayno in South Africa, unfortunately were unable to get you because of commitments they had outside of Australia, and we did have a board meeting only about three weeks ago over here, and they were unable to join us today, and they send their uh, apologies. Uh, Mr. Ross Walker, partner of Pritchett Partners, who are auditors, has been invited to attend today's meeting and he is available if anyone wants to ask questions about the financial statements, he's up in the front here, or anything else about the independence of the auditors. Now I would like to open the meeting formally and I have been informed that a quorum for each of the meetings is present and I will declare each of the meetings open. Um, I apologise in advance for reading a lot of what I've got in front of me, but unfortunately or fortunately, everything that I'm going to say to you has to be said to the whole market, and accordingly, I have to follow the script strictly so that um, there's no disinformation between the two. In the 2013 financial year, we moved decisively to grow and enhance our property portfolio and to further develop our funds management business. This was a landmark year in which Cromwell made a number of large acquisitions that moved us to a new level in terms of portfolio size and funds under management. Our funds management business hit new highs during the year, more than tripling our unlisted fund raisings from 61 million in 2012 financial year to $258 million in the 2013 year. The business successfully completed fundraisings for two major unlisted property trusts, the Cromwell Ipswich City Trust and the Cromwell Box Hill Trust. The award-winning Cromwell Phoenix Property Securities Fund also enjoyed record inflows. In the current year, Cromwell has continued to the growth of the business, launching three further trusts the recently launched Cromwell Property Trust 12, the Cromwell Direct Property Fund, and the Cromwell Australian Property Fund, about which Paul will tell you more later. The ongoing growth in earnings from our funds management business have reinforced the value of this management platform. We believe the funds management business is a valuable asset which provides a group with additional growth potential to complement Cromwell's strong property income stream. Investors are currently at an inflection point, with cash rates having been reduced significantly over the past 18 months. We believe that over time, investors will seek to move more and more into their cash into attractive, high-yielding investments. You only need to look at the increase in prices of bank shares to see that investors are running out of high-yielding options. As at the December 2012, there were more than 496,000 self-managed superannuation funds in Australia, which together hold $136 billion in cash and term deposits. Cromwell is well positioned to take advantage of the opportunities ongoing search for yield will present to its funds management business. We have already seen a significant increase in the investment demand and inquiries and expect this to continue. The starting point is being able to deliver products with a sustainable, competitive yield. Our experience tells us that reputation, product quality and structure are the other key factors in attracting retail investor demand. We are well positioned in all these areas. 
with a strong reputation as well as a very strong network, a limited number of competitors, and importantly, the ability to secure quality properties because of our track record and balance sheet. <coughs> Meanwhile, the key acquisitions on our balance sheet were, were the portfolio of seven office assets purchased from the New South Wales government for $405 million and two Brisbane CBD office to towers acquired for $65 million. Those acquisitions were funded in part by capital raisings of $444 million, which brought many new institutional investors onto our register and greatly improved our liquidity. We also saw a substantial increase in our security price from 67 cents in June 2012 to 97 and a half cents in June 2013, as the market came to appreciate the value of our potential to grow both earnings and distributions in what has been relatively challenging economic times. As a result of the capital raisings and increase in our security price, Cromwell's market capitalization more than doubled during the financial year, reaching $1.6 billion at June 2013 and making Cromwell the 105th largest company on the ASX. More importantly, the increased size and scale of the business combined with a larger spread of institutional security holders facilitated our inclusion in the S&P ASX 300 index in March 2013. Subsequent to the end of the financial year, we have also been now included in the benchmark S&P ASX 200 index. Since a large portion of capital invested by professional fund managers and other large-scale investors is directed towards companies that are part of these indices, our ability to raise equity capital when needed has been greatly enhanced. Inclusion in these indices has been a long-term goal for Cromwell, one which at times seemed out of reach, and we are very proud to have finally achieved it. Most importantly, we continued throughout 2013 to maintain our prudent approach to acquisitions and capital management, which ensured the Cromwell's earnings and distribution per, per security remained both predictable and attractive. Distributions paid for the year were 7.25 cents, which was up from 7 cents in 2012. This represents a growth in distribution per security of 3.6 in 2013. Distribution paid during the year combined with the increase in security prices resulted in a 12-month total return to our security holders of 54.4%. Whilst this is an impressive increase, we recognise it has been partly achieved on the back of an improving market and anticipation of Cromwell's inclusion in the indices I previously referred you to. However, we remain focused on longer term sustainable returns and we encourage our investors, be they Cromwell security holders or unit holders in our managed funds, to do likewise. In that regard, we are very happy to have delivered a total security holder return of 16.4% per annum over the past five years. This compares well against the ARIT average of just 0.3% per annum and the ASX All Ordinaries returns of 2.2% per annum over that same period. It also represents a pretty decent absolute return from what we consider to be a relatively low-risk business model. We will not rest on our laurels, nor simply grow for size's sake. We will continue to actively reposition and reduce or increase our portfolio depending on the circumstances and consistent with our long-term goals. We remain steadfast in our focus to return sustainable distributions over the longer term, whilst preserving the capital value of our investment pool. In conclusion, I would like to thank our CEO, Paul Waitman, and his resourceful team for their tireless work through the year, 
which has left us in this very strong position to continue to grow our earnings and distributions and to capitalise on further opportunities in the future. I'd also like to thank my fellow board members for their commitment, insight and continued efforts. Also, I would like to draw attention to our auditor, Ross Walker, for his diligence and professionalism. Mr Walker will rotate off the group's audit for this current financial year in accordance with the Corporations Act requirements and is being replaced by Nigel Batters, also a partner from Pritchard Partners. Finally, I'd like to thank one and all of our security holders for their support as we continue to reap the benefits of our discipline in these demanding times. I'd now like to introduce uh, Paul Waitman and ask him to address you. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff, and welcome security holders and guests. If I could just make a couple of unscripted remarks. Um, earlier this year, our intrepid Cromwell bike team, uh, comprising the fittest and most attractive of our number, uh, raised a record amount of money for the Ride for Cancer. Um, we, uh, in senior management, Daryl and myself included, uh, wanted to do something similar, and uh, we decided that it was a less unattractive option for us to grow these moustaches than to appear publicly in Lycra. So I, I hope if you feel that that was a wise decision and you're appreciative of the fact that you weren't exposed to that, there is a capacity for you to donate outside uh, to assist us with that uh, worthy charitable raising uh, endeavour. As Jeff indicated, 2013 was a breakthrough year for Cromwell. We achieved a 28% increase in operating earnings to a record $102.4 million and substantially improved the size and quality of both our property portfolio and our assets under management. Uh, during the year, Cromwell and our managed funds increased the value of the asset base by 39% through the acquisition of investment properties valued at $641 million. As Jeff indicated, we were also admitted to the S&P AS X300 index in March 2013 and in September to the S&P ASX 200 index. <clears throat> During the year, our market capitalisation more than doubled from 801 million in June 2012 to 1.67 billion at June 2013. And as a result of that, we, we really went into a new league. Importantly though, as we've grown in size, we've increased both earnings and distributions per security. Consistent with our long-term philosophy, we haven't pursued growth for growth's sake. Using the consistent and disciplined approach we've had, we've succeeded in outperforming the ASX 300 A-read in accumulation index over a 135 and 10-year period. We're particularly pleased that in 2013, our funds management business moved closer to realising its potential with strong growth that has continued through into this financial year. <coughs> Earnings from the funds management business increased to $5.8 million in 2013 from about $200,000 in 2012, reflecting our continued success in delivering new products to the market and a resulting increase in recurring revenue from assets under management. In the first five months of 2012, strong inflows have continued, mainly due to the launch of a number of new investment products. The funds management business had a very busy year, starting its promotion with its promotion of the single asset Cromwell Ipswich City Heart Trust, which closed early and oversubscribed in October 2012, having raised $52.5 million. We subsequently launched the Cromwell Box Hill Trust in December 2012 and closed it oversubscribed in April 2013. This single asset unlisted trust raised approximately $66.5 million. Through our stake in boutique fund manager Phoenix portfolios, Cromwell now also manages over $400 million in property securities funds, including the Cromwell Phoenix Property Securities Fund and investment mandates for a number of institutional investors. <clears throat> the 
The Cromwell Phoenix Property Securities Fund substantially increased its funds under management during the year and also won the Money Management Lonsec Fund Manager of the Year Award for Australian property securities for the third year in a row. Since the end of the financial year, we've gone on to launch three further funds, the Cromwell Property Trust 12, the Cromwell Direct Property Fund and the Cromwell Australian Property Fund. <coughs> Whether an investor is looking for exposure to a diverse portfolio of ASX listed property securities with daily liquidity and an absolute return focus or fixed term unlisted property trust paying monthly distributions, we have an investment vehicle to meet their needs. The Cromwell Property Trust 12 gives investors exposure to direct property assets in Victoria and South Australia. It's a back-to-basics property trust underpinned by three assets that are backed by high-quality leases to government and blue-chip tenants with a weighted average lease expiry of 14 and a half years. The Cromwell Direct Property Fund offers investors exposure to each of Cromwell's direct unlisted property trusts, which together own six properties. It therefore provides investors with exposure to a diversified portfolio of high-quality direct unlisted property. The Cromwell Australia Property Fund holds units in Cromwell Phoenix Property Securities Fund and the Cromwell Direct Property Fund and it provides access to our listed and unlisted property expertise. The Phoenix Property Fund of course provides access to ASX listed property securities. The foundation of our business remains our unlisted direct property trusts. Each provides investors with exposure to a single asset, or in some cases a small portfolio of assets, for a fixed initial investment term. <coughs> Each property trust has a finite number of units and is closed to new investment once a maximum subscription level is achieved. With no exposure to the vagaries of the share market and offering monthly income distributions, these fundamentalist property trusts continue to be highly sought after by investors. Our product range provides investment solutions for most property investors. Our distribution network has now more than 20,000 retail investors and has continuing relationships with thousands of financial planners. What's more, we have the products and the distribution capacity to grow the funds management into the business into the future. <coughs> Whilst our funds management business has seen substantial growth, this has also been a year of transformation for the property portfolio. Our property investments continued to provide most of Cromwell's income during the year, contributing $97.2 million after, dollars after debt costs, or 95% of operating earnings for the year, an increase of 21% over the previous year. This increase included growth in like-for-like -like property income of 2.8%, over the previous year and this was a well above average result in what was and remains a pretty difficult leasing environment. Property valuations for the $2.3 billion portfolio fell a modest 1.8% during the year as a result of softening market rentals. The weighted cap rate or property yield was 8.51% across the portfolio at June 13 compared with 8.28% at June 2012 and this change was largely a function of the acquisitions that we made during the year. The portfolio was 96.1% leased at year end with a 6.1 year weighted average lease term. Importantly, tenant quality remains very high with 46% of rent rental income at balance date underpinned by government owned or government funded entities and a further 37% from listed companies and their subsidiaries. The biggest change in the portfolio during the year came from our purchase in May 2013 of seven office assets from the New South Wales State Government. The purchase price of the New South Wales Government portfolio was $405 million, which represented an attractive yield of 9%. Approximately 63% of the portfolio is leased to the New South Wales Government with an overall New South Wales portfolio, portfolio weighted average lease expiry whale of 9.4 years. 
The New South Wales portfolio comprised three CBD assets worth a total of $316 million and four regional New South Wales assets valued at $89 million. The transaction enhanced Cromwell's existing portfolio quality by increasing our weighted average lease expiry, by providing additional income from government tenants and providing additional weighting to the Sydney and broader New South Wales office market. In another significant acquisition during the period, we entered into an agreement to purchase two Brisbane office buildings for a combined purchase price of $65 million. These buildings, known as Health and Forestry House, are adjoining properties situated at 147 to 163 Charlotte Street and 146 to 160 Mary Street in the Brisbane CBD. CBD. Both buildings are of a similar size and design and are leased to the Queensland State Government. During the year, we also continued our ongoing portfolio recycling strategy, selling an office tower at 101 Grenfell Street, Adelaide, for $43.1 million. Cromwell intends to continue to seek acquisition opportunities which complement <laughs> our investment strategy and existing portfolio. In the area of capital management, we had a solid year with NTO per security increasing three cents to 70 cents primarily as a result of the issue of new equity to fund acquisitions. In December 2012, we successfully raised $143 million from institutional placements, which were exceptionally well supported by a number of new and existing international and domestic institutional investors. That raising was followed by a share purchase plan in February 2013, which raised a further $39 million from our retail security holders. We raised a further $250 million in May and June 2013 through a placement and institutional offer. We're delighted with the strong support we received from our existing security holders and we're happy to welcome a number of new institutional investors to the register. <coughs> We've now raised $761 million of new equity since July 2009 at an average issue price of 82 cents or about a 12 cent premium to NTA. Debt increased during the year to, due to the additional borrowings drawn to fund acquisitions, but our gearing decreased from 51% to 46% as a result of the new equity raised, and that gearing now sits comfortably within our preferred range of 35 to 55%. In summary, we'll continue to seek long-term value for US security holders and for investors in our unlisted funds by buying well, managing assets through the property market cycles and adjusting the portfolio ahead of changing conditions to maximise return and minimise risk. <clears throat> the outlook for Cromwell remains positive despite the continuing sluggish pace of economic growth. Our portfolio is expected to continue to deliver consistent earnings in 2014 and operating earnings per security a forecast to rise to at least 8.3 cents, an increase of 9.2 per cent over 2013. Our property income remains resilient in the current soft market. About 60 per cent of the portfolio has a fixed rental increase built into the lease structure for 2014. Additionally, the Cromwell portfolio has minimal vacancy and very low lease expiries for the next two years. We also expect earnings to grow from our funds management business. And there's future upside potential from lower base interest rates that should reduce debt repayments. We think there's also growth potential through accretive acquisitions. We anticipate good growth in both operating earnings and distributions per security in 2014, underpinned by our strong property portfolio and our funds management business, which we believe can continue to s deliver significant growth in future years. I'd like to conclude by thanking the staff of Cromwell, my fellow board members, for all of their hard work throughout the year, all of which has made these achievements possible. I'd like to also thank all of you, our investors in Cromwell, and our unlisted funds for your continued support. Thank you very much.